podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by AOL Music and Spinner.com, where you can get free MP3s, exclusive interviews, and more. Video bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. It's time for the Daily Gizwiz with Mad's maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1058 for Wednesday, March 31st, 2010, the Luxseed LED Keyboard. And now, get ready for Dick. Middle of the week, it's Wednesday. Let's get going. It's Wednesday. Yeah, I don't have a Wednesday song, really. Day. I could sing the Monday song over again. No, it's Wednesday. Theme Tree Wednesday, the show you cannot hum. There's no way. The day when there's no theme. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Theme Free Dicky. Hey, Leo, how you doing? I'm great, Dick D. Bartolo. How are you? I'm super. Thank you very much. I'm going to let you do your little impression because I, I don't do impressions, but yesterday um, I was at Abon Pan, a little coffee shop uh, here in the city. Yeah. Uh, about a block from Mad Magazine. Yeah. And uh, Dennis was up at Mad with me, and we were sitting there, and he said, Is that Jackie Mason? And I sitting right next to us and and i leaned over and just to hear him talk for a minute oh he has so such a, a little unique he has a unique oh, he goes he dick, hey like, dick how are you good to see you it talks like this yeah. <laughs> is he talk, <laughs> this is my right he said, yes he, he said like one thing to his to his friend about go get some danish and did it and you couldn't so miss it that is, that is absolutely so, he talks just like this even when he's even when he's sitting at a deli he's talking like this <laughs> yes. jackie mason he has to talk like this you wonder when he was six so, years old, did he talk like this? Yeah, I know, I know. So uh, when he when he came back and sat down, I said, "Jackie, I just want to say I really enjoy you. Well, thank you very much. You're a real gentleman. <laughs> so kind of you. <laughs> did, 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 you did, you know, see, do you say who you are when you do that? And you say, you know what, uh, you might. You know what? It was it was with a few. If he was alone, I would have said, hey, you know, uh, I work for Mad Magazine. But he was with some friends, yeah. and I, I didn't want to like, you know. But that's. I think that's good that you came, went went and said hi because you know I think. People like Jackie Mason and me. <laughs> There's a phrase you don't hear a lot. People like... No, and probably never will again. People like no, me and Jackie Mason. <laughs> now finish that thought. We're, I'm we're famous people. We sit there. And sometimes I know there's somebody across the way. I can tell he's recognized me because he's looking at me like this. And I say... <laughs> It's okay. You can come up. You can say hi. You can ask for an autograph. And then he says, I just have a bill I want you to pay. And I, and I run. No, I think that sometimes, you know, I go places and, and you know, I think I should be recognized. And if nobody comes up and says anything, you think, gosh, you know, already I'm forgotten. So I think Jackie Mason, he probably appreciated it. You know what? You're probably right. Did a lot of people come up to him? Were you the only one? No. The, uh, I was the only one. See, in New York. Now, see, it goes both ways. Because, you know, you also, you want to have your Kanish. You want to have your Danish. You want to relax. You want to enjoy. You want to have a cup of coffee. You don't want people coming up saying hello. And yet, if you're sitting there and no one says nothing, it's like they don't know who I am. Yeah. No, so, especially someone who's getting on in years and exactly. is not. The, the, exactly. the youth market does not follow his right. career. So I think so. it's really good if some old guy comes up and says hi. Yeah. Because then or he knows that I'm old too. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. No. No, it's good if somebody comes up and says hi cuz I you know, if you, if he's being mobbed, no good. But if but if you're if nobody said anything, go ahead and say something. I think that's okay. Yeah, no. Well, that's why it's good that you travel with Dane because That's what I have Dane, Dane just do. he walks in front of you and says, "Say hello to the old man. Say hello to the old <laughs> man. His name Leo. is Leo. Say hello to him. Pretend you know him. Pretend you know who he is." <laughs> Yeah, exactly. exactly. No, I was. I'll give you. I'll tell you why this happened. I was in Austin. Okay. And uh, Austin, Massachusetts. Austin, Massachusetts. I love that right. town. Great place. Good people. Right. I love right. the Texas Red Sox. So I'm there, and I figure some people are recognizing me because it's a geek conference. But no, yes. you know, nobody's saying anything. So I go. Oh, I guess maybe you know. I guess nobody knows who I am. And then I go home, and I'm all over the Twitter. They're saying, oh, I just saw Leo Laporte at South by Southwest. He was walking around. And I'm thinking, why didn't you say hi? They should have said hi. Yeah, no, that's interesting. I remember once 
waiting for a number five bus that used to stop right outside of, of uh, NBC. And I came out and a bus was just leaving. And I, I was trying to see what bus it was. And, and the woman said to me, it was a number seven, not a number five. And I said, what? what? How did you know I was waiting for the five? She said, oh, I know who you are. I see you here oh. uh, two or three nights a week. Oh. I said, oh, well, why don't you say hello? She said, oh, I wouldn't dare say hello. I don't, don't want to invade your privacy. I said, lady, I would come to your house and sign an <laughs> autograph. <laughs> invade my bed. I don't understand how needy we are. Yes, <laughs> yes. Celebrities are needy, needy people. Well, it's funny because then if you get it too much, then you complain. So you yes, but you know, those, the people who are too much of the people who walk around with 87 people right. following them right. to ensure right. that other people go, oh, that must be oh. someone famous yes. because he has an entourage. They wear sunglasses so inside, yes, so, you won't, exactly. so you won't recognize them. Yes, exactly. And they have someone walking next to them with a pad <laughs> writing down every single thing and usually someone walking right. backwards in front of them right. with a video camera. Yeah. No, I'm not that vain, and I don't want, and I can understand wanting to have your normal life, but I also feel bad if people feel like they can't say hi, because I don't feel, I mean, when people come up and say hi, I just feel like it's friends, you know, that I haven't met yet, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, it's I think fun. it's good. But I think a lot of celebrities, uh, a lot of celebrities, don't, you know, would just like to live there. I imagine how it would have been, I know Johnny Carson used to like to go to France, because no one watched The Tonight Show in France, it was U.S. only. So he could lead a normal life. But imagine, you're Johnny Carson in New York City. You probably couldn't walk three feet. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely so right. So that's, that's when it's too much. I'm not, I don't have that problem. It was very funny because Mark Goodson was like us. He, he hated it if no one recognized him. So he liked walking around like outside the studio, like, you know, at, uh, at, 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 at CBS because there was a good chance Real fans would recognize him because, you know, he was in articles and things. But when he would go overseas on a vacation, there was the Mark Goodson office pool as to how many days before the end of his trip, when he's supposed to be back, would he come home because he was bored and no one <laughs> nobody recognized, recognized him. him. Right, exactly. And the secretary used to run the pool. That's funny. He's gone for two weeks. Do you want to, what day you want to go in that he's going to come back because he's no one recognized him and he's bored. Oh, we're a vain bunch. We are a vain bunch of vain. So, anyway, anyway, I mean, I just, you know, I was just thinking this probably Jackie enjoyed it when you said hi. Huh? Yeah, I think he did. Yeah. I think he did. And I'm glad I did. Yeah. It was a little weird uh, that you were talking like this when you said hello. <laughs> I didn't get to mention your name. I was going to say I'm a friend with Lee. Oh, of he Lee surely Lee. would have known me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love Jackie Mason. He's just, it was yeah, such a distinctive very personality. Very a very funny guy. Exactly. Uh, okay, I'm going to give credit to the person who said uh, Mike Heron and just sent me a, a single uh, one line email. Dick, this is great for the Daily Gizwiz. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful LED keyboard, a real light show. Wow. Watch the video at Think Geek. So you can watch the video, but in the meantime, I'll show you it here. Oh, you can Anyway, what you do, Leo, is... We can see it. Every single key can be colorized by you. Wow. You go into the programming mode. This is, you, this is right up your alley. Oh, Mike. There are 440 LEDs. You can go in and fine-tune the color that you want. Wow. There's a really neat mode called flash. Oh, where that's the, good. <laughs> where the keyboard is off, but every time you strike a key, it's like, you know, it's like a, a, a flash mode. So you can, there you go. You can, you can set four different color programs and save them, save the color programs. Um, now, this is not inexpensive because this is quite a uh, complicated device. So it's $150, uh, $149.99 for the white keyboard and $10 less for the black keyboard. But my friend over there, Ty at ThinkGeek said, Dick, if you're looking for bright lights, I should tell you, 
the black keyboard does not have the range of colors and flashiness of the uh, of the white keyboard. So if you really want to dazzle people, and you can just set it up and leave it on. You know, I at the office, I just leave it on here. And I had guests come by yesterday, and they this go, oh. This has 430 LEDs, so every key yes. can be its own color. Every key, you can do rainbow, you can do right to left, you can do rainfall where the, where the uh, colors come. I, want, uh, I think this would be great for the studio. It's pretty nifty. Yeah. It's, it's pretty nifty. Uh, I, I don't know. Would has, you, I guess you wouldn't see it, but it's just be kind of, for me, it would be entertaining for me. Yeah, 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 and you know, because you sit there, you have nothing to do. I got nothing to do. I'm sitting here. I'm you're bored. Sitting, there, you're bored, silly. You know, yeah, exactly. That, that, that kind of attitude. Yeah, it's like, yeah. You know how I, you know, I get this. Th I'm a, I'm, I'm a method actor. I pretend I'm in a jury, in, in a jury room, waiting for jury duty. That's good. Yeah, that's good. It's also the way you look during most of the podcast. So it's kind of <laughs> it's a little. It's a little hard to tell the, the you can't you can't tell the difference, huh? When I was when I thought I should have an eight by ten, I just took a, a picture like you sitting there just like that, you know, stoic. Yeah. And I and Depressed. I just had it I just had it reproduced four times in the four corners of an eight by ten. <laughs> and it's the many faces of <laughs> so. That's kind of like it. I figured, you know, if they got a sense of humor, they'll say, oh, this guy's funny. <laughs> funny man, Dick DiBartolo. Hmm, yes, exactly, exactly right. The many zany faces of zany. funny man. Dick. He'll make you laugh. He'll make you cry. He'll make you scream. Yeah. There you I go. Like there you go. I'm going to get some. I need some headshots. I'm going to get those made. Well, um, I like this so, keyboard a lot. I, you know, this is another, you know, that, somebody was saying in the chat room, and I think this is true. This would be great for a home theater setup. Because it's uh, self-lighting. Maybe you get the black one for that. Yeah, probably the black one. Yeah. It's uh, Luxeed, L-U-X-E-E-D. U, -E -E -D. U, I'm looking over there, the uh, U5. And again, if you want the brightest keyboard, the white one, mm -hmm. the one that's $149.99. If you want it less flashy and can do less, the black keyboard still has uh, light-up keys. But it doesn't do all the wonderful things that the white one does. Actually, it's, you know, it's true that in front of me, I have kind of a, this switcher has three colors. Red. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Green. Three. I'm talking 430 programmable LEDs that dynamically change color. I he can, has three. I could press a button and, and it changes. Yeah. Can I fly out to Petaluma and see that? Oh, I never saw that when I. Ooh, it's green. It's green. Oh, and now it's all. Oh, and now, now the, it's green. Oh. And then the top row is blue. And then now oh. it's green. Okay, now I'm doing fireworks here. Okay. <laughs> now this is fountain. Now this is Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's not very fancy. <laughs> it's not. No. No, it ain't gonna. You ain't gonna pack them in with that, pal. Oh, sigh. Uh, let's see. Um, well, as long as I've got this keyboard in front of me, maybe if I just press this letter right here. Jeffrey Vento says, on one of the Gizwiz shows a few weeks ago, Leah was mentioning the guys working in a meat factory with cold fingers. Yes. Would use sausages to control the iPhone's capacitive touch screen. Exactly right. This is true. We have an electrical current in our bodies. There is a video... At electronics, how things work. Yes, that show. Uh, uh, there, there was a video that shows the inventor has used that fact to keep 
people from using a saw and accidentally losing a finger. Oh, how interesting. You will note that as soon as the hot dog or a finger touches the metal blade, the mechanism he develops shuts off the saw and drops the blade down. Huh. When the system is activated, it ruins the saw blade and requires that you ch oh, wait requires that you change the seventy five dollar cartridge mechanism, but that's a small price to pay for keeping your fingers. No, in one of the live demonstrations, I heard a rumor that the inventor did not use the hot dog but his actual finger to prove it works. Once he got a tiny scratch. Uh, at the end of the demo, and they did show it. I thought it was an, interest, an interesting use of technology that you would like to know about better. You guys are all about entertainment, and you guys are actually getting better. Hmm. Uh, Jeff in Putnam. So if you, uh, if you want to seek it out, you have to go to sawstop.com at uh, uh, sawstop.com slash how it works videos. Well, that sounds like a good, so, a good gadget, actually. Yeah, actually, yeah. But I don't want to be the one no. that I, I could not be brave enough. If, even if I invented it, I'm not putting my finger in the saw. Yeah. But I will uh, put this link in my... Oh, there you go. Is that it? Yeah, saw stop. There. We are passionate about preventing saw accidents. Well, so am I, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, here, oh, no, no, there's a hot dog. Oh, the oh it's stopped. Oh, is made possible by a sophisticated He's brave to put mechanism. his finger in front of it. But the concept That's is crazy, actually very man. simple. The blade that. carries a small electrical signal. This charge is continuously monitored by a digital signal processor. When skin contacts the blade, the signal changes because the human body is conductive. This change in signal Boy. triggers a quick-release aluminum brake. Better hope you don't have your finger a cut off. Heavy-duty spring forces that would go right into through the it. teeth of the spinning blade. Oh, the I see. Dig into the aluminum. It really does stop the blade it. cold. Yeah. That's why I have to the buy a new one. The blade's momentum forces it to retract below the table. And the motor is automatically shut off. Oh, All of that happens in less than five thousandths of a second. Ten times faster than a car's airbag. All without damaging the saw. It takes less than five minutes to replace the brake assembly. Just slip the cartridge in, put a new blade on, and you're back in business. Hey, Dane, did you tell Leo that the, we have two saws in there? The one on the right ah! is the... Oh. Ah! Oh, okay. That's so All mean. Right. Hey, Dane. <laughs> I scared everybody. <laughs> Frederick, do you have any Band-Aids? Oh, that hurt. Big ones? Oh, that hurt. Wow. No, that's a, I think that's really neat. That's very clever. Yeah. That is clever. Yeah. That's All right, Dickie so D. Jeff and Putnam, thank you. Yes, thanks for explaining how that all that works and giving me a nightmare image to remember for the rest of my life. We will be back tomorrow with another great gadget, our Thursday gadget show. Dick, I hope I'll see you here. I'll be here. D-A-I-L-Y. It's the day.